Hello guys and welcome to a new update video. As you can see, we're now in front of my shop, but the first thing I want to talk about is actually not in the shop, but in this wooden shack here that a friend of mine usually uses to store some old bicycles in. But what we also have here is an electric motor scooter. And the story of how this got into our possession is actually a rather difficult one, a rather complicated one. But let me elaborate on that a little bit. Now see, about half a year ago, I started um, together with um, a larger number of young people uh, to build this clubhouse here in Cologne. And I know that the English word clubhouse has an elitist uh, ring to it. It uh, kind of sounds like a um, country club, something where wealthy people go. But this is actually kind of a poverty thing. See, most people my generation, at least uh, that I know here in the uh, big cities, uh, they don't have actual apartments. Most of them live in shared apartments, even in their uh, 30s. And in these shared apartments, there isn't necessarily a lot of space for social gatherings of any kind. So the idea really was to um, have a shared living room for theoretically a few hundred people, but on most days there are maybe 20 or 50 people are showing up inside this room. So we're basically renting this together. It's well a club with members and we have to pay regular fees, but they're much lower than um, well actually renting a proper apartment. So what happens here is that we sometimes have um, events taking place like uh, unplugged concerts or something like that. But it's mostly just what you would do in a pub, sitting around, drinking beers and talking, maybe have a sing along once in a while. And um, well, I was one of the people who actually helped to build the furniture in here. And as you can see, that's mostly made from... Uh, the leftovers of our societies. These are all, um, well, partially made from scrap wood and also just furniture that we could pick up for free. And um, the owner of this place, on the other hand, is quite wealthy and the rent for this place also very high because this is like um, somewhere in downtown Cologne. And, um, well, he used to uh, rent this and other places, other warehouses to tenants for years. And some of them, well, didn't pay their rent for months and never showed up again. So the guy basically ended up with a whole lot of things that did not technically belong to him, but which he would, uh, well, have to take care of for years. And part of that were these motor scooters I think they have been in his possession for at least five years with the uh, former owner never showing up again. Um, but one day he just had to get rid of them. And well, they were still standing here in this warehouse. So at the end of the day, uh, he gave them to our club. And this is how they ended in our possession here. Thing is, though, we don't have any keys, which wouldn't be a huge problem. But we also don't have papers and we also won't be able to get them. So we cannot use those scooters ourselves or, s or sell them. Uh, I think everything that's really left here is to take them apart and do something interesting with them. Now, as you can see, this motor scooter here uses a bunch of pretty big heavy batteries. These are unfortunately lead acid batteries that haven't been charged in many years, which basically means they're dead. Well, yeah, I might attempt to uh, recondition them but not sure about that at the moment. I connected um, a bunch of other batteries just to get to the required supply voltage of 48 volts. And here I'm testing if the motor and the motor controller are in theory still operational and it looks like they do. Well, however, I haven't really done a whole lot about that and um, I think you'll see more about this in a later video. So let's continue our little shop tour then, shall we? Now what we have here is a wooden workbench that I built a couple of weeks ago. And this was, I won't lie, about 100, 250 euros in materials for rather uh, thick OSB panels and some construction wood. And also these cast iron 
caster wheels here, all of which have brakes. But this is actually a pretty cool concept. I think the money was worth it. Because, for example, if you do occasional work on larger woodworking projects like I do, it's really cool to have a workbench like this in the middle of the room where you can just place huge beams and move them around. And, uh, well, on the days where you don't do that, you can just roll it into a corner, just uh, as I have done uh, right now. And the thing is that these caster wheels here, we got them for like 10 euros a pop, but normally they're more like 30 euros. So if you want to build something like that, you should find a cheap source for those. And I think this thing also should get a paint job because I really actually don't like raw OSB at all. But it was so cold in January here that uh, the paint wouldn't have dried properly in uh, due time. So I kind of postponed that, but I still should do that. And here's my main project at the moment that I wish I could spend 100% of my time on. And I think we're getting closer to that now that the renovations are mostly over. And as you can see, I added this large oversized looking heatsink uh, to the robot that carries a bunch of circuits. But at the end, it will carry about three times uh, the power circuits it has now. And then it will not be oversized anymore. Now these are a bunch of uh, high power age bridges. These are like 500 volts uh, at 20 amps. And their purpose is at the moment to control the washing machine motors that drive the robot. And they allow for uh, driving at variable speed and reversing these washing machine motors as well as braking them. And this is what the test routine looks like. <laughs> So with these age bridges, um, the robot is now theoretically capable of differential steering, but I need a step up converter and various like current control circuits for the field coils and conversion circuits to add a remote control receiver to this contraption. And well, you'll see way more about this in upcoming videos. And here is the next corner that looks um, somewhat different from last time when I made my first shop tour here. This is a desk that I have dedicated for reading and also for drawing and well, smaller arts projects because you cannot work on uh, hard engineering problems uh, all day, every day. It will drive you nuts. Uh, sometimes you have to calm down and do something that is a little more soothing for your mind. And uh, well, I like to draw sometimes because I did that a lot. Um, in my childhood where we didn't have a lot of uh, technology around in the household where I grew up. And here in the background uh, you can see a wooden shelf, a bookshelf that I built not too long ago, mostly from wood that I salvaged from an industrial exhibition here in Cologne. Now passing by my usual test equipment that you've seen in tons of my videos and here we can see the new kitchen corner of the shop and what might seem like a luxury at first glance is actually just yet another sign of uh, well the shortcomings of living in a big city these days um, because I basically spend all my time here in the workshop and I don't have a couch or a real kitchen in my home. So this is just a substitute for proper living arrangements. And in the background here, you can see a pinball machine uh, that I had to fix for a TV project. That's why I can't go too much in the details here, but well, I got it halfway running again at least. So let's go over to the storage section of the new shop then. 
And there have been some minor improvements here as well, like for example, this little piece of plywood here that now holds all my wires and lab probes and so on. And well, all it takes to do this is really a piece of plywood and a jigsaw. And I've seen this in other places, of course, this is not my invention or whatever. But uh, it kind of makes me wonder why it took me years to build one and I totally recommend you to do this yourself. And going over here, we have this um, little portable shelf here. And this is actually like a tower of power equipment. Most of these are uninterruptible power supplies that I want to use as the power inverters for a small scale uh, island type photovoltaic system. And this is one of these things that I wanted to do years ago when I still lived in, uh, in that uh, old house. And I've mothballed this project just like so many other things because I didn't have the space to work on it, but it's now coming back. And for those same reasons, I have now for the first time in years found the time and space to actually sift through all of my power equipment. And that's why I have now this entire shelf here filled with motors, motor drivers and so on, like this huge assortment of induction motors here that was given to me by one of you guys out there, one of you viewers, thank you again for that, even though it's been two years. So my plan for this year really is to make videos about power electronics and motors, and I will work on these practical robotics projects and use that as an opportunity to explain how these motors work, how the power electronics work that are required to drive these motors, and well, maybe uh, deliver some practical suggestions what motors like this could be reused for in a practical context. And um, yeah, so will there be more videos about the washing machine motor robot then? You bet your asteroids.